You will be surprised to know that the average person spends around two hours a week tweaking their AI prompts just to get desirable responses. If you're also getting mediocre responses that just don't hit the mark, you're not alone. The truth is most of us are using AI tools like we are still in 2022. I've noticed something fascinating in the comment sections of various videos lately. Despite over two years of using chatbots, many were asking how to get AI to produce truly impressive results. Not just acceptable answers, but work that actually saves you hours and solves real problems. Over the past year, I've been quietly studying AI agents, the approach that tech companies and AI researchers are actually using behind the scenes. I dove into specialized courses, combed through technical papers, and built several agents myself. What I discovered is that there is a fundamental shift happening in how AI works that most tutorials aren't covering. Here's the thing, learning about AI agents is currently a fragmented mess. There is no single resource that explains everything clearly, and most explanations are either oversimplified or drowning in technical jargon. Today I'm going to solve that problem by giving you the comprehensive breakdown you need to actually understand and use AI agents effectively. By the end of this video, you will understand exactly why your AI outputs have been disappointing and how to transform them using the agentic approach. No more wasted hours trying to coax better responses from ChatGPT. Let's get started. Here's our roadmap for today's crash course on AI agents. First, I will reveal the fundamental difference between regular AI and AI agents, a distinction that explains why your current AI outputs feel so basic. Then I will break down the five main agentic components that power truly impressive AI systems, including one component that the most successful tech companies are investing billions into right now. Next, we will explore how these components combine into sophisticated architectures that can accomplish tasks you probably thought were years away from being possible. I will show you a practical example that has already been implemented by a famous company that released all their code and sample workflows free of charge and open source that you can use right off the bat for your own projects. At this point, I will walk you through a realistic and workable agentic system design with four extremely important elements that give details and perspective to those mentioned five components. And finally, I will share the single most valuable insight I discovered about the business opportunities in this space, something that could completely change how you think about AI's future. Don't miss this. But here's the question I want you to keep in mind as we go through this. What if the limitation isn't the AI technology itself, but how we are instructing it to work? The answer to this question is what separates hobbyists from true AI power users. And it might surprise you. Let's dive in. So what are AI agents? Let's start with the basics. What exactly is an AI agent and why should you care? The easiest way to understand AI agents is to first clarify what is not an AI agent. When you go to ChatGPT or Claude and type, write me an essay about climate change and it spits out a complete essay in one go, that's not an agent. That's what we call zero shot prompting. What makes something an actual AI agent? It's all about the workflow. Instead of going straight from A to Z, an agentic workflow breaks down tasks into steps and follows a circular iterative process that was proposed in this research, self-refined iterative refinement with self-feedback. Think of it like this. First, the AI thinks about what needs to be done. Then it researches or gathers information. Next, it creates an output. Finally, it reviews and revises that output and then cycles back to thinking again. This cycle continues until it comes with a final result. It's similar to how humans actually work on complex tasks. We rarely get things perfect on the first try. The ultimate goal is to create truly autonomous AI agents that can independently determine all the steps needed, decide which tools to use, and go through this revision process by themselves. While we are not quite there yet in 2025, we are making rapid progress. Now, you might ask, how can you achieve this using just one language model? The answer is to prompt it in a way so it behaves like an agentic workflow with those four stages that I just said, where a single LLM would act as different experts in the cycle. If you haven't tried it yet, it's time to do so. And comment below if the response quality surprised you. 
Now that we understand what makes something an AI agent, let's look at the five fundamental components that power them. Reflection, accessing tools, planning, the controller unit, and multi-agent collaboration that I like to refer to as right tools properly controlled and mastered. The first component of a real agentic system is reflection, where an AI carefully examines its own outputs. This was originally proposed in this research, reflection language agents with verbal reinforcement learning. I have already explained this in detail in one of my videos. I will leave its link for you. But it works like this. Imagine you ask an AI to write code for a specific function. With reflection, the AI doesn't just write the code and call it a day. Instead, it goes back, reviews its own code, looks for bugs, inefficiencies, or style issues, and then improves it. The cool part is that this can be extended further by having a second AI prompt to reflect on it, creating a kind of peer review system, much like having a mischievous editor pointing out tiny errors and inconsistencies just for the fun of it. If you have ever tried to publish a paper or a book, you know what I'm talking about. The second component of an agentic system is the system's ability to use external tools just like humans, usually via API calls. One of the early works that proposed this was Gorilla, large language model connected with massive APIs, which I showed its results in my previous video too. Imagine you could ask your agents to monitor prices of similar items on Amazon and send you a message summary of the best item among them in terms of price, reviews, quality, and delivery time. There are plenty of use cases for agents accessing tools, such as social media monitoring, for example, enabling AI agents to track trends, monitor sentiment, and analyze online conversations. Database querying, for example, allowing AI agents to retrieve specific information from large databases. Or map navigation, for example, enabling AI agents to provide real-time directions, route optimization, and location-based services using mapping APIs, or even weather forecasting, or allowing AI agents to fetch current weather conditions, forecasts, and alerts from various sources, including radar and satellite imagery. Now, the takeaway message is that whether you have access to a single LLM or multiple ones, try to make a workflow for them so that one of them can access your API keys for web scraping or various tools or just a simple web search, and then pass the results to a second LLM or another instance of the same LLM to summarize the findings or write a report. This directly takes me to the third component of agentic systems, which is planning and reasoning. In the words of Andrew Ng, this means giving the LLM the chance to work more slowly and plan the completion of a task in steps, for example, by explaining the reasoning behind each result in clear steps. The underlying method for agentic planning is described in this famous research, Chain of Thought Prompting Elicits Reasoning in Large Language Models, where a series of reasoning steps are connected to each other like a chain, where each link in the chain takes the reasoning output of the previous link and builds on it, and then passes it on to the next link in the chain. The final step is to zip them together to form a complete process. You might have noticed that for a while, many chatbots have included this thinking process after receiving your prompt or question. It may take a little longer, but what it actually does is think through the consequences of each thought or plan and only give you the most plausible actionable plan instead of the first solution it comes up with. You might think this is trivial, but trust me, if you're working on a multi-layered project, this component is the make or break of your work. This concept of AI as a controller of other AI models has already been implemented in Hugging GPT as described in this paper. What the authors have done is essentially use ChatGPT as a controller to receive the task prompt from a user and then divide it into subtasks. The controller then uses any relevant model available in the Hugging Face repositories to perform the subtasks and retain the results, and even combine the results of multiple AI models for very complex tasks that involve multiple modalities such as text, speech, and vision.
So essentially, this force agentic element works like a manager and coordinator between multiple LLMs or a single instance of one LLM with different task roles. It takes an overall task from the user and determines which LLM should conduct which part of the task, then directs specific internal prompts to each of the LLMs for specific subtasks, then receives each subtask output from each of them and then decides if it needs to go through a revision process or if it's good enough to be sent as input to the next subtask task. You might remember this famous hugging GPT example of coordinating between image, text, and audio subtasks that I explained in my previous video. The key here is that the AI figures out these steps itself rather than you having to specify each one. And it all boils down to how you design your agentic workflow and how you prompt the controller unit. If you'd like to copy their strategy and code for this controller unit, I will leave the link to this project in the description box for you. The fifth and final component of an agentic system is actually an offshoot of the previous one. So instead of assigning a central unit as the controller of other LLMs, we just let multiple LLMs or multiple agentic systems converse with each other dynamically. This is probably the coolest agentic design we have so far. Imagine one entire agentic system which is specialized in marketing dynamically converses with another entire agentic system specialized in web scraping, product prices, and reviews, and they both send the result to a third agentic system that decides what type of product to offer with which marketing strategy to which customer type. Snatch this idea from you. The chat dev application has already been built on the same idea that is fully described in this paper, Communicative Agents for Software Development. ChatDev is a virtual company that employs multiple agents with different roles in the process of software development, such as designing, coding, testing, and documenting agents. Each of these agents could use multiple LLMs or generative models that mimic what human engineers do and converse in a real-world company, for example, self-reflection, instructions, and testing, and so on. Now that we covered the five main components of an effective agentic system, let's get down to the nitty gritty of the actual design process. We need to specify these four elements of model selection, task specification and delegation, task execution and monitoring, and finally response generation and delivery design. The very first step of the agentic design process is to decide on the choice of generative models depending on the type of tasks your system is supposed to perform. For example, reasoning, coding, creative writing, and so on, as well as factors such as model size and its training data quality. So whether you decide on more established models via API calls such as OpenAI and Google models, or opt for thousands of freely available models in the Hugging Face model repositories, you need to first make sure the model you're selecting is fully capable of performing that task. The Hugging Face leaderboard and its test scores for various tasks is a great place to start assessing your model's performance. If you're not familiar with how this leaderboard works and what these tests are, I've made a detailed video about this, which you can find its link in the description box. The next design element in this process is task specification and delegation. So by now you must have already some idea of what your agent is supposed to do, but that isn't enough. You need to break down the task into subtasks and specify more detailed methods and instructions to be followed by each model and how issues and errors should be handled. For example, how a model should delegate its task to another model within the agentic ecosystem. This step can be synchronized with the component of the controller unit agent. Honestly, this in and of itself is a really huge topic. So if you're interested in learning more details about this element, let me know. The third design element is task execution and monitoring. This stage is closely linked with the agentic component of the chain of thought and how you as the human in the loop collaborate with the agents in building the chain of thoughts in planning the execution of the task. 
The agents could also self-monitor and evaluate their own responses or invite the user to stay in the loop for feedback. In this evaluation step, you need to define the metrics or the qualitative criteria for the agent to track the performance metrics and tweak its behavior before producing the final response. The monitoring step also involves handling complex and unpredictable environments, ensuring safety without human supervision, dealing with resource constraints, and so on. What are challenges too? Ensuring that all AI-generated content is free from bias is crucial, especially considering sensitive topics. So developers need to detect and mitigate biased responses without over-engineering the system. And finally, the response generation and delivery element is all about the user's defined method of receiving the output. For example, as a generated text or image, saving the output in specific formats such as PDF and JSON files, or even sending the response via text messages to the user's mobile or email. Another aspect is personalization. Can AI systems generate tailored responses based on individual user preferences, past interactions, or even adapt in real time as the conversation progresses? This would require a sophisticated understanding of user behavior and context. So the key point here is that the agent should be able to compare and align its generated response with the input data and objectives it received from the user. This might seem a trivial step, but this in fact is a significant step in eliminating or reducing AI hallucinations. For this very step to be implemented, the models that make up the agent should be powered with contextual understanding. If you've been hanging around my channel for a while, you know that I've talked about how transformer-based models can achieve contextual understanding. Also, when it comes to response delivery, different platforms might have varying capacities for handling large volumes of data or traffic. For instance, a chatbot used on a crowded website would need robust support systems to manage simultaneous user interactions without performance degradation. These all may seem already like a ton of information to consider for a single system, but trust me, I haven't even scratched the surface. That's why this is just a crash course for AI agents and agentic systems. In future videos, I will try to disentangle these complicated web of steps and elements with a realistic and workable agentic workflow solution that you can all use as a blueprint and modify based on your projects. But before letting you watch my next video, if you remember in the beginning I told you I will share the single most valuable insight I discovered about the business opportunities in this space. That's customizable agents. Why is that? Well, I'm sure you agree that we are all cooling down from the initial excitement of using general purpose chatbots and generative AI for a good two years now. As this novelty is wearing off, something new and grand is emerging. Custom-made agentic systems for every industry or even every company's needs and objectives. This is an exciting opportunity for all of us to tackle various problems niche industries are dealing with. If you'd like me to make a more comprehensive video about this topic, let me know. But now you have my permission to see this video.